children need a non-judgmental, fun place to have science. As soon as you start testing them on stuff and making them memorize vocabulary words and take data and go through all the stuff that they need when they're in high school, that ruins it for the elementary school kids. The elementary school kids are just interested in what's going to happen. They don't care yet how much it's going to happen. Uh, if they get into how much it's going to happen, that's great. I mean, if it's a contest of some sort, fine. But we don't want them taking data. For rocket science, when we go into a classroom, the kids are coming from all different situations. Who knows where they've been and what they want to talk to their friends about. We have to focus their attention on the lesson for the day. So we tell them a crazy story. Uh, the story features Jack and Jill against the evil Mr. Fred. Now, evil Mr. Fred has inside of the mountain a dungeon, a cave where he can work. So he's down there thinking of evil do deeds to do. And he's got all his minions with him. And they're always trying to find ways to trap Jack and Jill. And the mutated old men got one of the kickmies. They picked him up and ate him in one bite. And this kind of scared the rest of the kickmies. So they all went, ah, we're running like crazy up to the top of the mountain. And everybody needed to leave the top of the mountain. So Jack and Jill called the Acme store of everything in order to can of instant purple petunia flavored spray glue. And their idea was they were going to spray it on Jill's hair. Now, if you were Jack and Jill, what on earth could you be doing with purple petunia spray glue? Yeah. Spray paint the mutated men's old eye, their eyes so then they could be blinded and then they could run down the mountain. Ah, yeah. Spray it on their face so they'd be blind. Blue Jill's hair at the top of the mountain and climb down. Ah, anchor it at the top of the mountain. Blew it up there and then climb down on her hair. Good idea. What would you do? We could glue her hair to the mountain. Yeah, glue it to the mountain. And then they slide down it like the towers. Ah, oh, and slide down the towers. Yes. They put the spray on the mountain so that when the mutated all they go, they just get stuck there. Yeah, put it all over the mountain so the mutated men will get stuck on it. Yes. Me glue Jill up there and then leave her on the other side so the mutated old people can get them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> glue Jill up there on the other side so the mutated men go after her. Everybody else will escape. Elementary school teachers have an unusual problem now, especially in California. The new standards require them to know things like the periodic table. Uh, most of them took one science class in college and typically didn't fare very well with that class. Now they're being asked to teach something that they have no clue about. And if you just look at the lessons that we've developed, to try and teach them the science that's behind those lessons is impossible. And we don't want a bunch of scientists in kindergarten anyway. We want the teachers that will help those children to develop social skills. So our, our plan is to have the teacher be a mediator, a kind of a manager of the children. They uh, present a story for the children to solve, and then they have the children do an activity. During the activity, it's a real experiment. Now, your objective is to make a roller coaster using this stuff that will keep the marble doing as many energy changes as possible. That means lots of highs, potential energy, and lows for kinetic energy. However, each of you only gets one of these pieces of foam. Um, Can we cut it? You don't get to cut it. Of course, you can, yeah, each person, you can add yours to other people's with tape. If a 
group of engineers was designing a roller coaster. They'll start doing some experiments. And usually you want to start off with a very simple experiment with inexpensive materials that will give them some foundation about where they're going to go. And they might want to see what's going to happen when they put a group of people through a loop-de-loop. -loop. Drop the marble down and see that it can easily go through a loop-de-loop. -loop. Then they might try a bigger loop-de-loop -loop just to see how exciting they can make it and discover that, oops, that was too high. So with a very simple experiment, they can find out a whole bunch of stuff. We do the same thing with the kids, except we tell them a crazy story featuring Jack and Jill and the evil Mr. Fred, and Jack and Jill have to get down from some high place like a tall mountain and with just a few things that they have at hand and let the kids brainstorm for ideas on how to do it. Mark is in China from up here. A lot of the students these days, because they've been so uh, exposed to the testing environment that's being developed in California, I felt that the kids are being taught just to become test takers and not really given the opportunity to stop and enjoy something for the sake of enjoying it, because they're taught so quickly to learn a piece of information, hold on to it, and then put it back into the test when it comes up, that it, it really doesn't allow them to work on that creative side, that, that inquisitive side that children have. And it's quite a shame because I feel like they're losing out on that. The hardest part for our new teachers is to not reveal what they're supposed to be learning. We don't want a teacher to go in and tell them this is what's going to happen. That's the kiss of death. What we want them to do is go in and say, we don't know what's going to happen. You're going to experiment and find out for yourself. So it's fun because they're on an adventure and they're sharing ideas with each other, and they're getting to do something that they ordinarily would have no chance at all to do. Oh! So rocket science really just offers information that I would otherwise teach them in a completely different light, where the kids can have fun with it and really become engaged and ask questions so that further on, hoping that they will want to know why a particular experiment work that way and it'll, it'll, it'll catch their interest in science and it'll want them to investigate deeper into it as they get older, especially like in middle school and high school where they have more of an ability to work in a laboratory setting and hopefully move on into college as well. There's a lot of different successes going on here guys, really. I mean for a teacher I saw a lot of them going on. What did you find that was successful? The loops. The loops? What about the loops? They were, if you went to the right speed, it might go through, and if you did it, mm -hmm. Okay. When it's long, then you need a small marble because it has more energy. If you have curves or something, it might not do anything. It might fall off. Speed. Speed. What about speed? To make it go down faster. Mm -hmm. What would that do? Make it, make it go to the end. Were you successful in reaching that uh, task? Yeah, that song was pretty good. Uh, well, we were working together and like it was fun and we, it was uh, instead of one person just like uh, deciding, we were all just agreeing upon how fast we want it, how long. Mm -hmm. Who were you working with? Jordan, Frank, and Jose. All of you know how well those guys work, right? Mm -hmm. Teams before. Does it normally work when you work with them? Sometimes. Sometimes, but actually, it's quite amazing to sit across the classroom and watch you guys working together. That was amazing. Very successful. I would definitely say that rocket science does cross many boundaries of learning for the children. Uh, one of them is John introduces words that the kids love to latch on to, uh, such as minions. Apparently they call themselves my minions now, which is quite funny in itself. But also they learn to work in cooperative learning groups. Uh, they learn to speak up in, in groups. So they work on interpersonal communication skills. Um, oftentimes when I've done creative writing lessons, they actually go back into John's stories and it motivates them to be creative 
in itself. So I've actually seen in, in my writing samples um, kids really pushing themselves a little bit further than they normally would, testing the boundaries because John creates such wonderful stories. I think they want to emulate that. Now, Jack and Jill are up at the top of this 30,000 foot tall mountain. Evil Mr. Fred and his minions are also up there and they built a ramp that they can slide down, down into beautiful pond. Jack and Jill and the Kickmoons don't want to do that. What do you think they're going to do? Jack and Jill are fat so they can roll down like the marble. Jack and Jill are fat so they can roll down like the marble. Maybe they're going to eat more so they can roll like marble again. Yeah, they might eat more so they can roll. Kick the Kickmoons down the ramps so then they can finally be happy. Yeah, kick the Kickmoons down the ramp. Well, this is what they did. They took the spray, the petunia flavored spray, and they sprayed it all over Jill's hair. Instant glue. And they formed Jill's hair into a giant roller coaster. They went down the mountain, did loop de loops and corkscrews all over the place, right through the kick me's whole wooden thing. And it ended up at the pond. And evil Mr. Fred looked at all this and said, Hoof, they're wasting their time. That'll never work. And he grabbed his minions one after the other and slid them onto his ramp. And then he jumped on right after the minions. And evil Mr. Fred and the whole trail of minions went down the ramp really fast. 30,000 feet. You're going to go with some speed. In the meantime, Jack and Jill threw their kick knees onto their roller coaster type thing. And the kick knees all started going down with Jack and Jill following right behind. Jack and Jill and the kick knees used up almost all of their energy and ended up kerplunk right into beautiful pond. Evil Mr. Fred and all his minions gathered up more and more and more speed as they went. When they hit beautiful pond, they were going about, oh, 120 miles an hour and hit the water. Well, when you hit water at that speed, at an angle, you bounce off. Yep, and Evil Mr. Fred and all of his buddies went ka and landed right in the pit <laughs> where he had put all these evil creatures oh, yeah. to make life yeah. miserable for everyone else. So the snakes and the spiders and the mad mutated dog and the pythons ate up so Evil guy. Mr. Fred and all the minions. And everybody lived happily ever after except, except, except Mr. Evil Mr. Mr. Fred. <laughs> Elementary school kids are just interested in what's going to happen. They don't care yet how much it's going to happen. If they're just finding out what's going to happen, they're so far ahead of all their contemporaries and even a whole bunch of adults that they're having fun and they're going to continue learning science their whole life. And science is basically just knowledge, is growing so fast, there's no way the schools or the books or videos or anything else can keep up with it. It's up to the child to want to do this on their own. So we create it, we present it in a way so that they're hungry to learn more and they'll always be hungry to learn more.